Hey everyone, looks like people are coming on now. Glad to see, uh, glad to be on here again. I'm glad to see familiar faces. Give me a few more minutes and I'll be back. All right, you guys, I'm back now. Let's go ahead and um, if, if you guys can hear me, can you guys say something in the comments? Can you just put like a one or a two or a hi or whatever you want? Just something in the, in the comments to let me know that you hear me. Okay, great. Um, looked like somebody was just trying to come in my office door. So give me a second so that we're not interrupted. One more second. Just want you guys say uh, where you're from. Comment where you're from in the comments while I, I make sure that we're not going to be interrupted. All right, great guys. Glad to be here today. We're gonna to talk about Facebook audiences. We're not gonna really talk about targeting specifically, although that's what audiences kind of um, overlaps with. We're gonna talk about different types of audiences and targeting is only um, a piece of this. And so uh, there's actually different types of audiences that you could make within Facebook. And uh, I, I list them out right here that you can see on the screen. Custom audiences, lookalike audiences, and saved audiences. And so I wanna go over each one of these and uh, look at them really, really good in detail. Make sure you guys understand what each one is and hopefully um, understand when you would be using each one of them. Does that make sense, you guys? How many of you guys think that, that information on, on audiences and, and targeting and, and the, the people that you're going after, how, how do you guys think, uh, how many guys think that that's helpful? Should be everybody, right? Everybody should think that this is helpful, um, no matter how advanced or how um, new you are to this, uh, this stuff is, is really, really helpful. So um, you, you've probably heard me talk, if you've heard me talk before, you've probably heard me mention uh, my, my three P's, people, product, and promotion. And uh, let me turn off my phone. The people, the product, and the promotion. Well, audiences makes up the people. It makes up the one big leg of, of the three P's. And so it's very, very important to have your audiences down. Once you figure out who your audiences are, uh, you want to keep them, you want to keep them saved, and you want to reuse them over and over and over again. Okay? So, um, you know, audiences, once you, once you find out who your customers are, who your buyers are, and, and who it is that you're going to be going after that right match, you, you don't have to find audiences anymore. Unless, unless you're going after a bunch of different niches. If you're trying to build million stores and, and go after a bunch of di different niches, then, then sure, yeah, you, you're going to ha have to find endless audiences. But if you have a store that's based on a niche and you only have a certain amount of products or a certain type of products, then once you found your audiences, you could just throw new products at them all day long once you find out what they like. So the, the audience part is very, very important. Um, it's it's you know, basically the, uh, the, the um, deciding factor of whether you're going to get sales or not. Uh, so uh, you know, if you don't have a people that's going to buy your product, then you know, everything is kind of useless to build a store, to build brand, build everything else if you don't have the people, the right people then um, everything else is useless. So go, let me go ahead and get rid of this screen that's up right now. Uh, as I said, we're gonna talk about Facebook audiences and, and you can find audiences a lot of other places. Um, you've heard me even mention a few of those, but we're specifically talking about Facebook because that's what we talk about in this group mostly. And so um, Facebook audiences, and, and also that's where you're gonna find the masses of people. There's people all over the internet, but where you're gonna find um, you know, on, on Facebook, you could instantly hit in, in a matter of 
you know, hours, minutes, um, really, if you just, you know, depend on how much you spend, you could hit millions of people. I mean, you have access to that. And so, um, and, and these are people that are, that are obviously enjoying leisure time. In other words, they have time to shop, right? You can find people elsewhere, um, you, you know, like say uh, LinkedIn, right? People are on LinkedIn, they're making business connections. They're not going to look like they really don't want to buy there, right? On YouTube, they might be looking at how-tos or, or watching music videos or, or whatever. They're not really looking to buy products. They might not even be paying attention to the video to catch the ad, although there are very, very um, useful ways of using YouTube. Um, my point is is that to, to really hit the masses, Facebook, you can hit them at every angle because they're there for leisure time. They're there, they're just to check out pictures and, and, and just waste time. And so to, to get that impulse purchase um, isn't very hard. It, it's, it's hard in the sense that, that it's hard to get an impulse purchase, but Facebook is the best way to do it. And so that's why I spend so much time on Facebook. That's why Chris spends so much time and everybody else uh, in the group um, spends so much time on Facebook is because, you know, th that's where uh, the money's at. That's where you're going to get some sales. So you should be able to see my screen now that says uh that has the audiences up here when you go to your business manager if you just click up in this menu you will find audiences and that's what i clicked i just clicked the audience tab and that's where we're going to find everything that we're going to talk about today where to build our audiences you, i don't know if you guys are familiar with this tab can you guys say something if you guys uh if you've ever came over to the audiences tab in your business manager and created an audience can you guys put that in the comments just let me know i'm kind of interested in how many people have actually came to the audiences tab i'm not talking about making an ad or making an audience within your power editor or ads manager when you're creating your ad but actually came to the audiences tab right here Very helpful. You guys don't be afraid to click around within your ads manager. I mean, this is, it, it's yours. You know, your, your business manager, it, it's yours. It's your little item, right? It's your little discovery ground. So, so play with it. Click where you want and don't, don't be afraid to see what all of this stuff is up here, right? That's, this is what I try to go over with you guys in this group. I just like to try to make it, um, make it known. Let, let this stuff be known to you because a lot of people just don't like to explore or are afraid to explore um, b because, you know, we're going to make mistakes, right? And so what I want you to do is, is take a chance, go ahead and just click around and just look. You don't have to actually do anything. Just just look around um, with the menus and, and see what's all there that you could, you could uh, learn about, okay, just to get familiar with it. But today we're going to talk about the audience tab, and it looks like some of you have, some of you have not much, and some of you have not at all came here to make your audiences. And that's about what I would expect. I mean, it's, it's one of those things that, you know, you don't always uh, have to do. Once you, once you get your audiences in here, you don't really have to mess with them very much anymore anyways. Um, but it's really good to know where this is at. And so what we're going to do, um, actually, let me show you on the left-hand side, you have these folders that are just kind of uh, organizing folders that um, it's really easy to find the different types of audiences that you have um, based on what it is, whatever it is you're trying to do. So sometimes I just want to look at the audiences I just made, and that's so all. Look at my recent audiences, or or sometimes I just want to see my audiences that are used within an ad, right? And so I'll say audiences. I'll look at audiences within an, uh, audiences in active ads, right? Or sometimes I might want to see audiences that are ready to use because if you see, um, we're back. Where's the other one at? There's some that are oh, all audiences. <laughs> Uh, there's some right here that are not ready to use and so uh, you'll get some warnings to where you sometimes don't have like you have audiences But you can't use them. They're built, but there's nothing really there. And so uh, you get these red errors um, So you, sometimes you just want to see the ones that are active or you want to see the ones that are not active So you can figure out why they're not active, right? So again, these are these folders on the left hand side. Don't be afraid to click around uh, shared account or shared um, shared audiences Audiences shared to an account to this account, and audiences shared by this an account, this account. So, um, say this audience right here, term two. I don't know what it is. It's aviation, I guess. Um, There's just a sample audience, probably, and it's a saved audience that I may, actually I can't do that one. I can't take a saved audience. I have to take a custom audience. Let's see this one. A custom audience. You could actually click share and share it with another account. 
one of your other ads accounts. That's very, very helpful for somebody like me. I was in the, um, I'm in the outdoor sporting goods niche, but I'm also, uh, I'm in a lot of other niches that kind of overlap that. And so like one of them is, is survival niche. And so sometimes I want to share my survival uh, audiences with my outdoor uh, my outdoor ads account and vice versa. I might you know, share it from my outdoors account to my survival account, right? And so uh, shared pixels, it's good to see which ones are being shared. And um, you know, as you grow your brand, you'll be looking at this stuff maybe a little bit more, um, but not too often. It's just, again, I want you to be aware that it's there. Okay, cool stuff. Okay, um, let's see. Let's talk about the, uh, let's see different types of audience. Let's just start at the top and then work our way down. Okay, I don't have any slides for any of this today. A lot of times I, I do these, these uh, webinars or live feeds and I have slides that make it a little bit easier uh, to remember, but I'm just gonna kind of use Facebook itself as my slides, right? Just go straight down. I'm gonna click on create audience and then there's these three different options of audiences that you can create, right? Now those are the three that I had here on the cover that said custom, audience, lookalike audience, and saved audience, right? Those are the same ones right here. Custom audience, lookalike audience, and saved audience. So that's what we're going to be looking at today for the rest of this webinar is uh, these different types of audiences. When you would want to use each one, I'm going to give you kind of some uh, just my thinking on it. Um, and then uh, let's see. So what each one is, how to use each one, how to create each one, um, when you're going to use them, and just some helpful information around them. Okay, so let me hear if you guys. So, so custom audience is number one. Look a lot like audience is number two, and saved audience is number three. You guys put in the comments if you've used all of them, then put one, two, three. If you've, I just put one, two, three in the comments. If you've used custom audience, put push one, put one. If you've used look like audiences, put two. If you've used saved audiences, put three. Um, if you used all of them or whatever ones you use, just put that number. Um, just, you know, it's helpful to see what other people are doing too because this kind of encourages other people, right? There's a lot of people in this group. There's, um, let's see, let's see how many people in this group now. 15,000 almost, 14,985 people in the group, right? So it helps other people when, when they see what you're doing too because it gives them, uh, you know, the, the confidence to step out and, and do the same thing. So, um, you know, that's why I ask you guys to put that information or to comment. So great, so let's start off at uh, custom audiences. Custom audiences are audiences that you build yourself from data. So custom audiences and look at, look like audiences are built from data uh, that, that um, you somehow have acquired. Um, I'm, I'm using that really loosely right now. We'll, we'll actually look at the exact definitions here in a minute. Um, but that's how these two differentiate from saved audiences. Um, saved audiences are gonna be built kind of like targeting audiences, tar audiences with interests and demographics and, and things like that. So custom audiences come from, say, like a pixel or from your MailChimp list or, or other things. Um, look like audiences from custom audiences and then saved audiences are built from Facebook uh, targeting information. So I'll look at, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about each one of those more in depth here in a second. I just kind of wanted to give you uh, an overview of these three real quick and what separates these two from this one down here. Okay. Cool. It looks like just looking at the numbers, it looks like that um, you know a lot of you guys are actually stepping out and making uh, saved audiences. That's a really good thing. Uh, I see a, number, a lot of number ones, so there's a lot of custom audiences. That's awesome. I see a few number twos, so not many people using look-alike audiences. Um, look-alike audiences are if you guys have gotten sales. Here, here I'm going to give you guys a tip. All of the you that are saying one and three. If you've gotten sales from one or three, then you need to be using lookalike audiences. Make lookalike audiences of your uh, data. There's different ways to do that. I'll, we'll, we'll talk about that here in a second. Um, but you need to be using lookalike audiences. Lookalike audiences are, what, are what's really gonna give you the ability to create uh, long-term campaigns and create a sustainable store, okay? Um, they're, they're highly un... Uh, undervalued, I believe, and I've been using them for. I've been using look like audiences since they very first came out over two years ago, and um, like they, they just keep getting better. So um, they're highly, highly valuable. 
Okay, so let's start with custom audiences and look at what those are and how can we use them. So if you click on create audience and then custom audience, there's four different options that you can use. And um, Facebook gives us, I'm just gonna actually read the description up here that's kind of helpful for, for uh, all of us, I guess. How do you wanna create this audience? Reach people who have a relationship with your business, whether they are existing customers or people who have interacted with your business on Facebook or other platforms. So a minute ago, I was trying to ex explain it as like you, you possess this data. Well, the, Facebook describes it in a way that it, it's people who have a relationship with your business, okay? So you're gonna create custom audiences. So remember, there's, there's custom audiences, lookalike audiences and saved audiences. Custom audiences are created from people who have a relationship with your business. Okay, so one, you can have a customer file. A customer file to match, use a customer file to match your customers with people on Facebook and create an audience from the matches. The data will be ha hashed prior to upload. So in other words, if you have a list of customers and you have their email addresses and their or their phone numbers or their inf any other information that could link them to an account on Facebook. If you have this information, we're going to look at what that can, can be in a minute. You can use that information to create an audience that you could then target on Facebook. So if somebody buys a product from you and they give you their, their email address, which you're going to because you're using Shopify and you're, they're, they're just going to put in their email, email address because they have to and, and, uh, so, so when you get customers that are buying from you and you're getting their email address, well, you could come over here and create a customer file that then allows you to target them on Facebook. Now, that's you're, you might be asking, well, Robert, I, I'm finding these people on Facebook in the first place. Like, why, why are, you know, can I just target them the, the old way rather than making a customer file? Well, um, customer files are going to allow you to make lookalike audiences as well. So customer files are really important. Um, and also they allow you to reach your customers with a bunch of different products as well. So um, customer files are very important. Let's just go ahead and click it and open it up and see how we can create customer files. This is um, what I do a lot when I create my custom audiences. I actually uh, manually copy and paste the data. I'll go over to my Shopify store and say somebody um, bought a uh, fidget spinner. Those are really popular right now. Um, a matter of fact, I shared the Bluetooth fidget spinner in the group the other day, and you guys all said you've seen that one before. Um, but let's just say, let's just say I had a, a group of buyers for the the Bluetooth fidget spinner, and say say I had a say I, was, I had a fidget spinner store that had 25 different fidget spinners, but only one of them was a Bluetooth fidget spinner, and I wanted to make an audience of only those people who bought that Bluetooth fidget spinner. Well, I'd go into my Shopify store, I would sort through the orders by uh, the, the, the product that they purchased for the Bluetooth spinner. And then I would copy the audience information, or excuse me, the, uh, the, the customer information, and I would paste it right in here. And this is the information that you can upload. You could uh, upload emails, phone numbers, mobile, I, mobile advertiser IDs, first name, last name, postal code, city, Facebook user ID, age, gender, year of birth, date of birth, country, state, province, Facebook page user ID, right? You, you could upload all of this information and create audiences out of it. Now, you can't just upload uh, a gender, like just female, the letter M or F, and, and just upload that and make an audience of that. It's, it doesn't work that way. Um, you have to use, um, let's see if this gives me information. I like clicking on these. I'm gonna be clicking on these these helpful links throughout this, this uh, webinar because I want you guys to get used to doing that too. I really want to stress that. Uh, every, every time I do one of these webinars, I'm almost always linking or coming over here to this business help page, the Advertiser Help Center, um, because it's so useful. I mean, I come here all the time. I spend a lot of time reading, reading this stuff. So um, you, you should get used to it. And just like any other thing, um, you're not expected to remember everything, right? It doesn't matter if you're an engineer at, at NASA, you're not expected to remember all of the physics involved. You have to utilize the resources of available books and the internet to try to figure stuff out. Same thing with Facebook advertising, right? Or, or, or marketing or running a business. You're not expected to remember everything. 
You just got to remember where to go to find the, the everything, the information. And so that's what Facebook, um, you know, that, that's what this Advertiser Help Center is for, um, is, is it gives you a place to go find the information that you need. So uh, very, very helpful. And so customer data preparation, best practices, um, I'm not going to look at all of this, but it gives you a whole page of how to prepare your data. So, um, you know, spend some time on that if you really, if you want to, but to be straight up, what I do for this right here is I just copy the email addresses. That's the only one I use. I'll just copy the email addresses of all the people that bought my Bluetooth fidget spinner and I will click right here, paste that data and I'll paste that data in there and I'll name my audience and I'll hit next and now I have an audience of people who bought my fidget spinner, my Bluetooth fidget spinner. And guess what I could do with them, you guys? I could create a look-alike audience. Now I'm not gonna do that yet because I wanna go through the rest of the custom audience stuff, but I could create a look-alike audience of people. So an, a, so an audience that looks like the people who bought my Bluetooth fidget spinner. So if I had 200 people that bought my Bluetooth fidget spinner, I could create a custom audience of them, and then I could create a look-alike audience of those 200 people, which will give me at least 2 million people. And it's going to be the 2 million people, at least, minimum, on Facebook that are most like the original audience, which would be the audience of Bluetooth fidget spinner people, buyers, right? Does that make sense, you guys? Does that make sense? I, I, think, you guys, uh, I think you guys are getting that one. Um, it, it's very, very straightforward, and um, honestly, it's very, very powerful. This is stuff that you guys need to be using. Okay, I wouldn't even call this advanced stuff. I would call this um, maybe intermediate, um, but even beginner eating intermediate. Just to be just getting familiar with these is beginner intermediate. Beginner intermediate. Okay, um, so so get started on them. Just learn about them, you know, from right away. Um, but again, custom audiences, customer files. You could you can uh, copy and paste that information, like I just showed you, or you can import from Mailchimp. Now I use Mailchimp. I like Mailchimp. A lot of people use other uh, email um, email platforms, but we uh, I love Mailchimp and I highly recommend it. And I will probably never go from Mailchimp, um, sim or at least anytime soon, simply because it integrates so easily with everything. And so you could get the Mailchimp app. It used to be called Chimpified. I don't know what it's called now, but it would just install right into your Shopify store. And every customer that goes through your Shopify store is automatically put into MailChimp, into a MailChimp list that you pick. And the cool thing about it is it tracks what products they purchase. It tracks all the purchase information. You can look inside your MailChimp account and see the, the, uh, the information or, or segment your list based on the, the um, purchases and the behaviors on your Shopify store. Now, if that doesn't mean anything to any of you guys, or to, to some of you guys, let me explain what MailChimp is. MailChimp is a email service that allows you to send out uh, bulk emails to e to your email list. Okay, so I, I think there's been a few webinars that have talked about emails before. Um, that's not what this is about, so I'm not going to spend too much time on it. I just say that I like Mailchimp for my for my email services um, because one, it connects easily into Shopify, and two, it connects easy right into Facebook. It's the only option here, right? It's the only option for creating a custom audience of customers um, from an email service. Mailchimp's the only one, and so. Um, you know, I like it for that reason. Because what you could do then is that when somebody buys from your store, you can pick the, the list from that store in your MailChimp account and then create an audience of those people, right? So um, I'm not gonna run through that one because it's, it's really simple. Um, I'd, have to, I'd have to log into my account and show my lists and all of that, and I'm not gonna do that. Um, but it's really, really simple to, to do. If you have a MailChimp account, I recommend uh, that you start at least building um, your, your main customer list with it. Okay, you guys following along? You guys like it so far? Okay, um, custom audiences, that was just customer file, way more. How do you want to create this audience? Um, oh wait. We already went over that spot. I thought I clicked this. Okay, website traffic. Uh, create a list of people who visited your website or took specific actions. Okay, so customers, customer, uh, customer file was a file from data, so a copy and paste file or a file from, from MailChimp of your customer's 
that was, you know, it was data that you collected. Website traffic is different in that you're going to create a, uh, you're going to create an audience based on the actions that people took on your website. Let me move this over here real quick. Uh, I want to see what shows up when I click that. Okay. Um, okay, we're good. I have other people's ads accounts in here, and so I always want to be careful that I'm not showing their information. I work with a lot of different people. Um, so, <clears throat> okay, so when I click custom audiences and uh, create or create audience, custom audience, cust we looked at customer file, there's website traffic. Um, you're going to click there, and you could build an audience off of people who visited uh, your, your website or visited certain pages on your website and not other pages. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So you can create an audience. Uh, you're going to choose a pixel. So you have to create this audience. You, you have to have a pixel on your store, which you guys should all have a pixel on your store already. You should have already went through that. Um, you're going to pick the pixel that is that you have associated. You, you probably only have one. I have a million of them. But it, it, you're going to pick the pixel. You are going to um, create an audience from that pixel or, or the traffic that was uh, that, that hit that pixel. So you have this little thing, this little piece of code that's called a pixel. You guys, again, you guys should have you guys should have already um, under, you should already understand this. You have this little piece of code on your website that's called a pixel, and whenever people visit a page on your website, it triggers that that little piece of code and tells Facebook, hey, somebody visited this page, or hey, somebody bought this product, or hey, somebody uh, put this or added to cart, right? It, it relays back that information to Facebook uh, via this pixel, okay? And so what you can do now is you could create an audience from the people who, uh, who have done any of those actions, any of the actions that are associated with the pixel. Let's see. Um, so the Facebook pixel, that is the source of traffic, okay? Uh, these are helpful too, helpful pieces of information. I, I recommend that you guys hover over these all the time to learn. Um, website traffic is choose how you want to add people to your audience, include all of your website visitors, or create rules that only add people to a, or people who visit specific parts of your website. Okay, so you could pick how you want to target them, and right here it says anyone who visits your website. So this is like, so now you got your pixel on your store, so anybody who hits, hits any page on your website, you could create an audience. Uh, from them, from all of them. And you could do it within, it used to be 180 days. Yeah, 180 days, maximum time. So you could go back 180 days if you want. Um, I recommend having a few different audiences for each one. Um, I don't do this for all of them, but I do test them for all of them. And the reason why is you're going to find different results with different audiences that you create. And so I typically will have a 180-day one, and I'll, I'll save it, and I'll create audience. And then I'll do a 30-day one, and I'll name it and create audience, and then I'll do a seven-day um, audience. And the reason why is, is because these audiences, not only can you create lookalike audiences of them, but you can create, um, you, you can retarget them, right? You could now show them ads on Facebook, right, based on the action that they already took because now they're audiences in your account. Right, so people who visited a certain page, so so these are people who visit my whole website. So I create those three different layers of audiences or time frames. The reason why is because most people are going to buy within the first seventy days, but some people will buy way out, right? But you know, up to one hundred and eighty days, people typically typically aren't going to buy. But I will have a one hundred and eighty day audience because that'll allow me to retarget those same interested people later on with different products up to six months, right? So they might not be buying the product that I'm showing them right now which is the people that I want in the seven day audience, the people that are highly interested, but they might buy that product later on or might, might buy a different product later on. So I keep them in my 180, 180 day audience, if that makes sense. Okay, um, we could go way in depth on some of this stuff, you guys. I, I'm trying to keep this as simple. I'm trying to like, I, I wanna make sure that you understand every little aspect of this um, just in the general sense. So um, we can't really go way in depth on the logic on a lot of this stuff. That's, that's for another time. 
Um, you can include past website traffic, which I always do, right? I mean, if you have a pixel on your on your store and and um, you've never created an audience, maybe you've never done these these audiences before, and you want to go back and do that because you've you know, maybe you've been running your store for six months and you want to create an audience off of it now. I um, you're like, man, I, I, but I, I should have done this six months ago. No, you could do it now. Just click include past website traffic, right? And then it'll get everybody from um, you know the past six months or the past seven days or whatever it is that I choose. Sound good? Okay, so let's look at, um, you got your pixel chosen. Okay, let's, so let's look at the different options that you have here. You can do anyone who visits your website. So this is just anywhere on your website. This is, um, I use this one the least, I think. I, I'm just trying to think of it off the head. I, I think I use this one the least. I do use this one. I create an audience of people who visited my website, and I'll create a, a uh, look-like audience of it, but I won't target them very often. The reason being, it's almost useless. If they visited every product on your store, then I, I can't really get precise. It's really, I guess it really depends on what your store is. I'm, I'm thinking about um, I, uh, my stores. And so um, if you have a very niche store you know, that's focused on one specific niche, you might use this a little bit more than I have. These are the fidget spinner store, right? You have the fidget spinner store that has all the fidget spinners on it. Um, you, you're going to retarget everybody that hits any page. You don't really care because you're selling fidget spinners. Right versus me, where I have an outdoor store, but I might have people that are hikers, um, but not fishers, right? Not fishermen, right? And those people aren't, um, you know, the ones that are going to camp with a tent, right? And so I have all these different types of audiences, and so when I have an uh, uh, an audience like that or a store like that, then I don't so much want to use anyone who visits your website because, you know, I might be targeting them with a fishing item, and you know, that's only a small piece of everybody who visited my store, right? Make sense, you guys? So that's why, that's the, the when and how of that one or the logic behind that one. Um, you could visit, or you could target people who visited specific pages on your website. And so that's the one that I like to do uh, most often. Actually, I, I use custom combination most often, but the, it's, it makes up this one. Um, people who visited specific pages. So say I had, um, let's use the Bluetooth fidget spinner as an example again. Say I have a bunch of fidget spinners on my, on my store, but I wanted to target people who only visited the one that was the Bluetooth fidget spinner. And so I take the, the keyword or, or the page, uh, I choose the, the, the page for the Bluetooth fidget spinner, put in the keyword Bluetooth, because that's gonna be in the URL. Make sure it's a word that's in, a, in the URL of the product. And I create, the audience from that, right? Or you could use um, the URL contains, the URL does not contain, and URL matches regular expression. So you could use actually these different options. So say I wanted to get make an audience of everybody who visited my store, but didn't visit the Bluetooth fidget page. Well, then I could put URL does not contain, right? Now you're most likely gonna use that one in a custom combination, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, how do I get back to where I was going? Up here. Um, custom combination. So I'm going to show you that here in a second. That's the one I, I use the most, but I want to show you kind of what each one of these are. Uh, people visiting specific web pages, but not others, which is another one that I use often. Um, so you could put Bluetooth. URL does not contain Bluetooth, but does contain everything else. So now they, they didn't Bluetooth or visit the Bluetooth. Um, you know, custom. You could do whatever you want. Cu customize it however you want. I'm just, I'm just using it as an example. You guys have to think about this in your own stores. Um, every store is different, you guys. Every store is different. So URL does not contain, or URL does contain. Um, so that's people visiting specific web pages, but not others. And then people who haven't visited in a certain amount of time. So people who haven't come to your store in a while. And then uh, you could do a custom combination. What happened? Let me refresh this page. Okay. Uh, you could do a custom combination. And the custom combination is actually even cooler. Because remember, this is off your pixel. So you could do... Uh, Hmm, I wonder if it's not going to give it to me on this account. Um, oh, we're doing, I think we're doing website traffic only. Let me cancel this. I, before I jump ahead, I, I haven't done this part in a while, so. 
I don't want to say something that's not true anymore. Huh. Okay. Um, so we'll, we'll just deal with what's here. Um, so URL, you can put your URL contains, and then you can put URL contains the you know a bunch of phrases that are in the URL because maybe you have like three or four different Bluetooth fidget spinners, uh, but you only want to get like your fidget the the um, maybe the blue Bluetooth fidget spinner. That's a, that's a tongue tire twister. Okay, you could add, you could layer the different words right the way you want or for, for the keywords that that you want to create the audience that you want. You could also exclude traffic that meets the following conditions. So you could uh, exclude, these people would be excluded from your targeting. So maybe people who, so this is where, what I like. People who visited Bluetooth, right? But did not visit Think You, I think is how Shopify has it. Right, so people who looked at the Bluetooth fidget spinner, but did not purchase the Bluetooth fidget spinner. Right? Does that make sense, you guys? So you could do inclusion and exclusion for your um, your custom website audience. So let's look at these again. We have our custom. So create audiences because I know people are coming on and leaving. So I just want to go through again uh, what we've done. We went to create audience. And then we've looked at customer files. Uh, that's where you take uh, customer data, people who are already related to your business or have a relationship with your business somehow, and you're gonna uh, create an audience of them. And then there's website traffic. These are people who visited certain uh, website or certain pages on your website. And, and it says and took specific actions. It's not giving me that option to show you guys there for some reason in here. So. Um, so I can't go over that. I feel like I'm missing something right now. Um, yeah, so, so you guys could go in there and look and see if it's there, but I'm pretty sure there's gonna be some more options when you create, uh, when you go into create custom audiences and the website traffic. Um, so look at that a little bit more. And then you can take, uh, you could create audiences of people who have interacted with an app now you might be like, okay, well what, that has nothing to do with us. We're on Shopify. We don't have apps, right? We don't have. We don't have. Um, oh, I thought somebody was answering. Oops, I, I'm gonna keep track of these these comments over here because I th I thought I missed something. It threw me off once already. Okay. All right, cool. You guys are following me along. All right. Um, yeah, your head's spinning. Okay, that's fine. You'll get it. Just watch the video over and over and over again. Uh, I don't know if you see my posts today, but I've spent over a million dollars on Facebook ads. I've, I've t done a lot of this stuff. So, um, and even you could tell that even some of this stuff it's like changing, and and I have to look things up, and I I don't remember everything. So, um, you know, it's okay if your head spins. Just like I said a minute ago, it doesn't the, the, the NASA even the NASA engineer doesn't remember all of the physics, right? It, it's that's that's reality. Right, so as long as you remember where to go find the information, that's all that really matters, okay? So we've looked at customer file, website traffic, um, app activity. So um, you might, you can have an app. I have an app for my main store. We have, matter of fact, we have a couple different apps and they're kind of out of commission right now. There's, you can still go download them and people do interact with them and, and buy from them, buy within my app. And so you can have an app for your store, okay? And you could target people who've interacted with your app, right? Or you could have a different type of app. And so um, apps on Facebook, there's actually apps that you could build um, that are really, really simple. They're, they're, they're not the normal type of app that you would think of. They're just a connection with a website. And so maybe people will log in with Facebook, right, on your website. Maybe you'll have them log in with Facebook. Well, that login with Facebook is connected to an app. And so you could create an audience of people who logged in with Facebook on your store if you if you have it set up that way. Now most people don't. I don't have that. I'm, I don't have that at least on my e-commerce stores. I do that with my marketing stuff, but I do not use that with my my e-commerce stores. Um, but you can. 
You you really really can't. Matter of fact, we did do it on our e-commerce stores. I take that back. We had a, a free we had a, a free plus shipping offer one time. Here's what how you guys could do it. We did a, a free plus shipping offer one time, and on the landing page of the free plus shipping offer, in order to to see the page, so it would see the page, but it was kind of hidden with an overlay and then a button that said share to claim this offer, and they would click share, and and then they would be able to claim the offer. And everybody who clicked share would, would be in engaging with the app, and so I could make an audience of everybody who shared, right? So that's another way you could create an audience of people who used, uh, used apps. Somebody says, maybe more like a macro app. Uh, you know, it's, it's not something that you're going to build, though, right? It's not, and I don't think they're macros anyways. They're, they're, uh, no, it's, 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 it, they're, it's different. It deals with Facebook's, uh, Facebook's API um, if you go to if you go to your Facebook and you scroll down on the left hand side, you'll see an apps section or developer section. Everybody should have one of these, I think. If you have a page, uh, you'll see what I'm talking about. Don't be afraid to click around. That's one of those things that you shouldn't be afraid to click around. It's not it's not going to hurt anything. Just don't create anything that, or just don't click anything that says, you know, are you sure you want to delete your account or anything like that, right? So um, we're not going to go into that one. I'm not even going to click on this one. I don't think because I don't know what's going to show up. I don't want to show you guys the stuff that we have in there. Um, but don't be afraid to, to um, explore, okay? And then you could create an audience based on engagement on Facebook. So this is where you could create an audience of people who uh, did something like, I think I went over this with, recently with you guys. No, maybe not. Um, who, well, let me just show you. Actually, let me move this over real quick. Okay, cool. So when you click on engagement on Facebook, you're going to be able to create a list of people who engaged with your content on Facebook, obviously, right? So you click that, but it gives you four different options of what those actually are. And these are always changing. Um, I'm, you know, I didn't know what to expect when I clicked on it a minute ago because it's constantly changing. Facebook, like right here, it says new, right? Um, even though I think that was the first one that was there, maybe. No, not all these ones. Um, and then, I, you know what? I, I, I know 100% sure that I have different ones in, in in different accounts, different options in different accounts. So you guys might be seeing different options. Um, wow, yeah, I, I have different options in different accounts. So uh, this one for video, you can create an audience. Well, let me start at the top. What kind of engagement do you want to use to create this audience? Engagement audiences allow you to reach people who have previously interacted with your content on Facebook. You can create a video audience, which will be a, creating a list of people who have spent time watching your videos on Facebook. Do you guys think that's helpful? Creating a audience of people who watch your videos. Hasn't Chris talked a lot about video? Like, isn't, isn't that, like, hasn't he talked about, I mean, like, that's a lot of what his examples are, is video ads. And so if you could create an audience of people who spent time watching your videos, that's, that's powerful, right? And you could actually create audiences of people who uh, choose the content type. I don't know what they're showing. Here. What's, what's here? You could actually choose the. Yep, that's exactly what I was going to show you. Cool. The the um, how much of the video they've they've watched. The portion of the video. So have they watched uh, ten seconds of your video? Have they watched twenty five percent of your video? Have they watched fifty, seventy five, whatever? Right. You create audiences from that, and then. Um, you create audiences from leads. So leads are a type of post, right? A lead is a type of post on Facebook that you guys might not be familiar with. Again, don't be afraid to click around. When you go to your Facebook page and you're gonna create a post on your Facebook page, there's a little button there that says something about create a lead post or something like that or capture more leads or something like that, right? Don't be afraid to click that because what it's gonna be able to do, what it's gonna allow you to do is create um, audience or lists of people who opt into something, right? So just like any other type of lead, if you're familiar with any other type of lead capture or, or um, you know, opt-in forms or things like that, um, it's, it's the exact same thing. Except on Facebook, it's a little bit cooler and it's a little bit easier for the, the prospect because they don't actually have to enter in any information. Facebook already has the information. So people who, uh, who engage with your lead ad or who, who opt into your lead ad, 
when they click the button to opt in, it, Facebook pulls up all of the information that they already have in their Facebook account, their email, their name, and those things, and say and, and gives them the option to change that information or just click submit, and that's the information that, that goes in and is submitted into the lead capture. And so it makes it really, really easy for the customer to, uh, to, to opt into something, but it also gives you leads of people who are on Facebook, 100% sure they are on Facebook. How do you know? Because they opted in on Facebook. So now you have a list of people of leads of people who are on Facebook 100% sure. Completely different than, than if you were going to, say you, you're targeting people on Facebook and you drove them to an outside website and you collect leads on your outside website. Well, they're gonna be putting in a million and one different email addresses and about you know maybe uh, three fifths of those emails will then be able to be made into a custom audience because the rest of them aren't gonna be an email address associated with Facebook versus if they if you collect the lead right here inside of Facebook it's automatically generated and put into the to the lead capture and the customer the prospect just clicks a button and it sends it to uh, you know to your to uh, Mailchimp or whatever that inf that email address is connected to Facebook because it's automatically generated by like they put it into Facebook already that's what they created their account with on Facebook right and so you know that those leads are connected with Facebook and that's very very powerful very very powerful a lot of, so, a lot of people miss that but it's very powerful for the reason that you could then target them again, you create lookalike audiences, you could do a whole bunch of stuff, um, you know, with that complete lead list. So, um, you know, we're talking about audiences, not so much leads. And so the important part was what that I, was what I just mentioned that you could create audiences from these leads, right? You could create an, a custom audience of people who click the opt-in button on your Facebook account, right? So that's an engagement on Facebook. And then Canvas. Canvas um, was, I, I was talking about this recently, but it wasn't in this group, I don't believe. Um, that, that training, I think, is on my Facebook page or something like that. Um, but I was talking about Canvas ads where you could create uh, audiences with Canvas. And I actually create these funnels, Facebook funnels. Um, they're basically just a normal funnel, but you build it right inside of Facebook using Canvas. And uh, Canvas are like small web pages within Facebook. Okay, we're not going to go over how to do all this right now. So it's very deep training, but um, they're, they're basically like a small web page within Facebook, and you can create audiences based on what canvas or what web page that they visited. So what we did is we create these funnels. We have a per lead people through three or four, uh, three or four canvas, and I can make an, uh, an audience off of each canvas that people visit. Right. And so, um, you know, just like every other funnel, I could, I could have, I could segment my users by audiences. So I'm not going to go over that really deeply right now because it's way beyond the scope of this training. Um, but, you know, I like to throw that information out here for you guys. For those of you that are a little bit more advanced, I like you to know that stuff because it gives you something to play with. Okay. So video, lead, canvas. Um, most of you guys are all just going to be dealing with video, but I do want you to explore leads and canvas. And then you will also be dealing with a page you could create an audience of people who create a list of people who have interacted with your page on Facebook right you see that one again okay yeah so uh, you could when you choose that it gives you the option to choose the page and then you can choose uh, different options of what to include or who to include so choose who you want to include in your audience based on the kind of engagement they had with your page by default, we'll include the, broad the, the broadest category, or you can narrow it from the menu. Okay? So um, include, let's see what we have. So anyone who visited your page, anyone who engaged with any post or ad, people who clicked a call to action button, right? So that the call to action button is that little button that says learn more, shop now, that whatever all the options are on your ad. So if they click that call to action button, um, you know, maybe they click somewhere else on the ad, but didn't click the call to action button. Well, now you can just get the people who did, did click the call to action button. Helpful. People who send a message to your page, uh, that's helpful. You create an audience off of that. Those are, you know, maybe people who are cut with customer service issues and you just wanted to uh, retarget them with um, you know, helpful or, or um, happy information about your about your brand, so that you know maybe they had a negative experience and you want to retarget them with a happy experience. Then you could use that. Um, another way you could use this is if you're using like bots or something like that, and you're you're uh, interacting with people through Messenger. Well, then now you could target people 
who sent a message to your page, right? So that's helpful with that as well. Um, and then people who have saved saved your page or any post on your page. Those are people that just are highly uh, interested in what you have to say for whatever reason. Um, you know, it depends on your brand. So these are different ways you could target people who have engaged with your page. Um, you could do the same thing as far as time, except I think yeah, 365 days here. It gives you it gives you 300. It gives you a whole year to go back and uh, create audiences of those people. Okay. So that is creating a custom audience a custom audience from a page. Okay. So um, let's start back at the beginning. So custom audience was the first type of audience that we were going to talk about. Remember we talked about we were going to talk about custom audiences, lookalike audiences, and saved audiences. And so custom audiences was that was all that we just went over. That that first hour was all about custom audiences. Okay? And then lookalike audiences. Lookalike audiences come second because well you need to have the first audiences. You need to have the the foundation which is your custom audience, your custom audience, and then you can build a lookalike audience. No, Simeon, get to your daughter's graduation. Get there. This training will be recorded. Let me refresh it. Facebook glitches out sometimes when I'm when I'm uh, doing these live feeds. So we looked at custom audiences, uh, all of them. Let's run over. Let's go over that really quickly because now there's a lot more or a few more people on here. So um, we looked at creating audiences. We looked at custom audiences, which are you can be done from customer files, website traffic, app activity, or engagement on Facebook. Now we're going to create lookalike audiences, or look at look at how to create lookalike audiences from existing data. And so what you would do is you would uh, create lookalike audience. Remember that a lookalike, actually let's look at this. A lookalike audience is gonna come from a portion of people between one and 10% of all of the people on Facebook. And it's gonna find the one to 10% of people that are most like the audience, the, the source audience. And so the source audience could be a page, it could be a custom audience, um, it can be, a, uh, I don't remember all of them, and I'm not gonna scroll down, but you guys could click there and see um, what you can include. So actually, let's just look over here and see what they, what they tell us. So an introduction to look like ads, I got that right here by clicking learn more. If you guys wanna learn more about look like ads, click there. I recommend it because again, I highly recommend the Facebook Advertiser Help Center. I repeat stuff over and over and over, guys. I do it on purpose. I know you got, some of you were sitting there like, why do you say the same thing over and over? I do it because I want you to remember. That's why. Okay? So introduction to lookalike audiences. A lookalike audience is a way to reach new people who are likely to be interested in your business because they're similar to people who already are. I love how they phrase that now. Oh, they've been working on these, this information for, for a while now, and, and Facebook's got some really, really, really smart people out there, and, and the way they phrase this now, it, it, makes compl it makes a lot more sense than it used to. A lookalike audience is a way to reach new people who are likely to be interested in your business because they're similar to people who already are, right? Makes sense, right? People who are already in your interested in your business, a lookalike audience is going to be someone that is similar to that. Right, so it's not technical jargon. It's really simple. This, these uh, help pages, they're they're really simple in, in uh, layman's terms, um, to, to where we could all understand them. And so I highly recommend that you come read these pages. Um, let's see. Here are some additional bits of information that are useful to keep in mind when considering lookalike audiences. Your lookalike audience will only include people from the countries you specify. Your lookalike audience must contain at least a hundred people. Yeah, that's important. So you have to have, like, say you make a lookalike audience of. Uh, say you have a buyer's list of Bluetooth fidget spinner buyers, and um, but you only have 96 people on that list. Well, you can't create a lookalike audience from that custom audience. You need to have at least 100 people in your source to be able to create a lookalike audience from that. Okay? Um, you don't have to have anyone from the countries you want. This is new. I just read this a little while ago, and this is new. It didn't used to be this way. Um, so it was right here it says you don't have to have anyone from the countries you want in your target or, or from the countries you want to, to target in your source. 
So for example, if you have a source audience of 10,000 people from Finland, but you want to create a lookalike audience of people in South Africa, you can. Now that's new. You used to have 100 you used to have to have 100 people in that one audience. But now it's saying you don't have to have anyone from the countries. Right? You don't have to have anybody from from South Africa in your original audience to create an audience there. Now that's helpful. That's powerful stuff, you guys, because say you're selling in the United States and now you all of a sudden want to sell to Australia or or Canada or the UK. Those are the top those are the top 3. New Zealand, those are the top 4. Right? If it, you know, you have the audience to do that already. You have it. You already have it. It's there. You don't have to do anything. You just create the lookalike audience and then start selling. Right? Powerful stuff, you guys. Okay, you can create up to 500 lookalike audiences from a single source. I didn't know that because I haven't created 500 lookalike audiences of a single source, and I doubt you guys will either. Uh, people in your source audience will be excluded from your lookalike audience unless you're using a pixel, which makes complete sense. Um, you know, if you're making a lookalike audience of people who bought your uh, your fidget spinner, then the lookalike audience is going to exclude the people that bought the fidget spinner. However, if you make a lookalike audience of people who, or excuse me, if you make a, um, let's, see, let's read this. If people in your source audience will be excluded from your lookalike audience unless you use a pixel as your source audience. So a pixel is going to take an action. So if if people uh, if people are uh, purchasing, then um, it will handle that different. It's a pixel action. So I'm not exactly sure what it's saying there. That, that uh, I, I don't want to make any assumptions. I thought I knew what it was saying, but I don't want to make any assumptions. You guys read this and, and uh, figure it out yourself. You can use multiple lookalike audiences at the same time for a single ad set. So you can layer your lookalike audiences. So if you have people who, uh, a lookalike audience of people who bought your uh, Bluetooth fidget spinner, and you also have a look like audience of uh, people who bought your, um, I don't know, your Batman fidget spinner. Now you can sell them a Bluetooth Batman uh, portable speaker. I don't know. I'm just I'm just trying to think of how you can kind of layer them together and and uh, you know make make use of this. Okay. So you guys, be, you know, always go back and read the information, learn as much as you can. Um, you know, obviously, I don't know everything on all of these pages either, and so you shouldn't expect to. But you want to learn as much as you possibly can. Okay. So you create it. You, you pick your source audience. Um, let's. Oh, that's what I wanted to see over here. Does it give you a list of? Um, no. Source. Okay. Source audience. A source audience is an audience a lookalike audience is based on. For example, if you create a lookalike audience from your page fans, your page fans would be the source audience. Okay, well that defines it. I thought it would give us a list of the different types of source audiences. Um, not created with with a data partner. No, yeah, that doesn't give us that list. So you'll just have to click around and find out which one, which are all. The, actually, I think we could look right here. Let me let me close this out. Uh, in your filters, you can see your source. Yeah, so the sources you have a data file, you have a website um, information, you have mobile app, video, lead ad, custom audience user, fan page, conversion pixels. So these are your, your different types of sources. Okay, and those so those are the sources that you could choose to make your look like audience. Now you could choose between one and ten percent. And I always like to do the 1%. I use 1% all of the time simply because um, you know, it's the most narrow. And you know, I like audiences between one and four million people. That's like my, my sweet spot for audiences. Uh, um, you know, that's what I look to build my audiences around is between one and four million people. And so this 1% gives me that. It gives me the two point, um, actually I think I gotta pick one of these. Uh, choose a country, United States. And then, um, yeah, so it gives me two million people. Because in the United States, there's about 210 million people on Facebook, roughly. And so if you targeted 1% of the, the 1% of those 210 million people on Facebook that are most like your target audience, or, or your, excuse me, your source audience, well, then you're going to end up with about 2 million people. And so I like 1% the most because it gives me the most, uh, the, the most precise but yet still big audience.
Well, you get, I guess you can't get any more precise than that. Um, Ten percent. I also like to do two and four percent. Um, sometimes three. I'll just, but I'll usually like two and four. I'll make. And I'll cross those. I'll layer those. So I'll make like a four percent audience, and that'll give me eight point four million people. And then I'll, I'll, in my targeting, I'll choose that lookalike audience, and I'll cross it with, say, some niche or something like that. So say I was selling, uh, say I have a, a lookalike audience of, of fidget spinner buyers, not Bluetooth now, just all fidget spinners. And now I wanted to go after fidget spinner buyers who are also into Batman. Well, then I can do that by. Um, you know, or I'd want to do that by having the larger audience, a, a, a bright, broader, so two to four percent somewhere around there, audience of people who are most like my buyers, and then I would target within, you know, when I'm making my ad, I would choose this lookalike audience, and then I would layer it with a target audience of Batman people, people who like Batman, right, as interest. So that's where I use the, the higher percentages. I have heard of people going up to 10% and I've made them that high. I just haven't found any effective use of them. Other people have, so uh, you know, be willing to explore. I guess it really depends on the product. So like a fidget spinner, you could almost go so broad on that targeting on the original audience that it makes sense that a lookalike audience at 10% would work for that as well. So um, you know, it just really depends on the, the product. Okay, uh, another cool thing you can do is that you could actually make several audiences based on these segments all at once. And so how I said I like to make a few of them sometimes, you can make up to six of them. And sometimes what I like to do is just do the first few by, not sometimes, I've only done this a couple times, um, but I'll make the first few by the, uh, you know, the uh, percentage by, by 1%, one, zero to one, one to two, three to three, and so on. And then I'll make that last one from five to ten, so I'll capture a large amount of people, right? The the, the most precise are going to be the most useful, so you know that's why I'll make a lot of them down here, you know. But you know, if you maybe you want to go really broad, you can do whatever you want, right? I tell you what I, I do, you guys, but you know, be ready to explore. Okay, do whatever you want. Create your audiences. You click create audiences, and it'll make all of these different audiences, and you can see the different sizes of them. They're all about the same because they're you know they're all just that one percent or a big gap. So they're all gonna be about that same size. Um, and, and they're really, really helpful. Um, let's see what this information is down here. If you measure revenue per conversion or a lifetime value for people in different audiences, if you measure revenue per conversion or lifetime value for people in different audiences, you can create look -alike, separate lookalike audiences with different ranges of similarity to your source. This allows you to bid differently for audiences with different version, conversion values. Okay, that makes sense, I guess. Um, it's uh, basically the same kind of the same thing I said. You could create different audiences based on um, how close they are to your source. And so uh, very easy stuff. There's not really nothing else to go over there with look like audiences because you really just do that one thing. You just make your audiences, right? Custom audiences, there's a lot more to go over because there's a bunch of different types of audiences and each one had its own little details. Um, but look like audiences are really straightforward, right? You really ha it, it's really straightforward. Uh, someone asked a question. Do we have? Do I have this stuff written out? No. This this, this is um, you know as I said in the very beginning the, that I didn't have any powerpoints for this because there's so much information here and really this this dashboard. If you just go to right here your menu and click on audiences and you come to this dashboard, use this as your as your um, your written out information, I guess, or you know, as your as your resource of remembering how to do this. Just click on it. You know, create audience, custom, then go to custom audience. If you don't remember what it is, Facebook will tell you what it is, right? And if you still don't know, well, then come over here to the to the advertiser help center and and look it up. Okay, um, I, I could not. It's not possible to make a list of all of this stuff because it's it, there's just so much of it. Okay, and I'm leaving out a lot. I'm really leaving out um, a lot. Of, I'm just trying to give you a general a general overview of what there actually is. Okay? Yeah, go back and get get the beginning, Bobby, and uh, you'll you'll catch a lot of that. So um, we looked at custom audience, lookalike audience, and now saved audience. Somebody said, when should you create a custom audience? Where did that go? Just jump down. Uh, when should you... When should you create a custom audience and how many pixel fires? Uh, you have to have 20. 
you have to have 20, um, at least 20 for it to, to be active. So um, in the beginning, I showed the little red dot of, of uh, audiences that are not ready to use. You have, you have audiences that are ready to use and audiences that are not ready to use. Well, the ones that are not ready to use are the ones that you created too early. You didn't have enough, enough data there. Um, how do you implement this lookalike audience when creating an ad? Um, there's a bunch of different ways to use lookalike audiences. Um, it, it's how I scale. It's the, it's the main reason, way I scale. So I'm not going to go over that too much. It's just you want to use them to expand your audiences. If, you've, if, you, if you're getting a lot of sales or if you've gotten some sales on your original audience and you want to get more sales, right? That should be all of us then you want to use a lookalike audience. So how do, how do I implement it? Just like that. When I want to get more sales, I create a lookalike audience. Okay? Um, use the same ads. Use the same ads. Okay, so now uh, saved audiences. So we looked at custom audiences. We looked at uh, lookalike audiences. And now let's look at saved audiences. Saved audiences are basically the same audiences that you guys are going to create right inside of Power Editor when you're creating your ads or right inside of Ads Manager when you're creating your, your ads. It's the same setup. Right, you got all the same. You got the same information. It's a little bit different. It looks a little bit different. You don't have as much stuff, um, like like in Power Editor. In at the ad set level, you'll have to deal with placement and things like that. But this is just building an audience, so you only deal with the audience portion here. So it doesn't look exactly like the Ads Manager, but it's still the same uh, information as far as the targeting aspect of it. Okay. And so what you do is when you create a saved audience, you would just come in here and you would create an audience that you uh, want to be able to use over and over and over again. Let me ask you guys a question. I'm going to ask a question in about a half hour. So let me ask you guys a question. How many of you guys have went and created a campaign, built out your audience, got your campaign built out, and then maybe the same day or maybe five minutes later, or maybe five days later or five weeks later, you went back to go create another ad set and you have to go rebuild, you have to go type in each one of those interests. Right? Have you guys been, have you guys made enough ads yet to where you've had where that's happened to you where it's, where it's been frustrating? You're like, man, why do I got to type this in every time? And then I'll open up my other, I'll open up my old ad and I'll copy the audience, like copy and paste it into the new new ad set. And like it, it's it can be strenuous when you do that, right? When you when you start working on your ads and, and, and growing your your businesses, um, you know, to, to have to type in your audience every single time can waste a lot of time, right? It could waste a lot of time. And so um, what I like to do is create saved audiences. And what that allows me to do is when I'm making my ads, I just click my, I just pull up my saved audience or I choose my saved audience and all the information is already filled in. Okay. Um, somebody says I can, ha I always save audiences while creating ads in ads manager. Yes. Great idea. That's what I actually do. I don't actually, um, well, sometimes I, I do sometimes create my audiences in here. And also if you have a team, if you have a team working for you, you could have like the person that's that's responsible for building your audiences. They're not going to be making your ads sometimes, and so um, you would have them create your audiences right here in the audience section. But if you're doing it yourself while you're making your ad and and you wanted to save that audience, definitely definitely do that. Um, so glad to hear that some of you already are. So. How do I create an audience here? Well, the same way I would create any other audience. I would just find my interests and my languages and demographics and all the information that I need to create an audience, and I would just click Save, Create Audience, right? And then I could go target that audience. I could pull it up in my Power Editor and, uh, and you know, use it over and over and over again without having to type it. You know, type all, you know, you got 25 interests in one, in one ad set, like you gotta, type that over and find them and you know you're not going to remember them all and so if you save your audiences you'll always have your audiences that you come back to because remember like I said earlier in the, in the beginning that once you find your audiences you don't have to find them anymore you don't have to keep going to find more audiences typically if you're in one niche you you, you find your audience and you stay with that audience right so you know if you're if you're selling uh, pit bull items you know the people that, who own pit bulls and, and they bought you know I love my pit bull mug you know that same person is highly likely to buy I love my pit bull t-shirt, right? They're gonna, it, it's, it's just highly likely. You already have an audience that's resonated with the product. Remember the people, the products, and the promotion are the, are the keys. And, and if you've already got a product that's, that's re resonated with that product, with a, if you already have an audience that's resonated with a product, or I guess that's by, vice versa, then uh, you, know, you could use that audience over and over and over again, okay? Just throw more products at them that are very similar to the first one. So save your audiences so that you don't have to 
um, you know, type them out over and over. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you guys just an extra little thing right here. I'm actually going to build an audience for you. I'm going to show you one of the ways I build audiences. Um, actually, I'm going I'm to kind of give you an overview of, of one of the ways I do my targeting. Okay? Uh, can you guys give me a niche? Give me, give me a niche. So just pick any niche or a product. Don't give me a niche. Give me a product. Product that you, that you I don't want to do the fidget spinner. Don't, don't give me something general. Give me something that's um, a little bit more uh, niche That way I could actually give you an example. Just type in a niche or something into the, into the comments. And then I'll show you how to make uh, what I call a lump audience. And while I'm making my lump audience, I'll show you how I break things up by interest type. Okay, um, let's see, jewelry, cargo trailers, maternity bra, wrist straps, cat and coffee, car decals, a lot of good ones. Um, babies, I like babies. We'll go with babies. Babies is a fun one because there's a bunch of different things I could do there. I like that one. A lot of different things. Babies will give me a lot of options to show you. Dogs and cats would too. Um, it'll give, give me a, the ability to show you a lot of different options. <clears throat> so if I wanted to create an audience of people who, um, let's, uh, well, I asked for a product. So, so now we need, uh, okay, somebody said socks. So let's say we had a pair of baby socks, right? That was our, let's say our product, right? I, I don't want to go after a niche because you don't target by niche, you target by product. And I want to make that very, very, very clear. Okay, you don't target by niche, you target by product. Yes, you can go after target trailers. I'm gonna tell you how to go after, uh, how to go after trailers. I just, it, this, it wouldn't have been helpful, uh, a helpful example for this, but to go after trailers, you could target people who own certain types of vehicles. Wanna know how you do that? Behavior, um, car owner, actually let's go after um, F-150, oh no, it's not gonna give me a, let's see, um, truck owner let's see what, what it gives us so pickup truck owner ford truck owner chevy chevy truck owner uh pickup truck pickup truck pickup truck chevy truck um uh truck driver owner operator that's their that their job op occupation uh owners of aftermarket like like look at this stuff you guys don't like you can go after this stuff don't don't be afraid like don't be afraid of these products i hope this was good to, i hope i hope because you guys said you can't go after people somebody said in the comments you can't go after people uh with 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 these trailers yeah you can Right? There, there are certain ways to do it. You just have to be creative, right? So don't be afraid to click around. But that's not what we're going after. We're going after, we're selling baby socks. Okay? Baby socks. I just bought, I just bought my, uh, my uh, I just posted on this on Facebook the other day. Um, bought my little baby girl. She's just over th two and a half months. Just bought her first pair of Jordan booties, little baby socks. Because I, I wear Jordans. That's what I like. So let's say we're selling some baby booties. Let's make it Jordan baby socks. Let's make it a little bit more creative. You guys want to make it a little bit more creative? So we're trying to sell Jordan baby socks. There's a bunch of different ways we could do that. Let's just type in the word baby. Actually, let's type in socks and see what comes up. Baby socks. So I typed in baby sock because that's my keyword. That's my product, right? That's, that's the, the, the thing that I'm going after. Remember, we're not targeting a niche. You do not target a niche, you target a product, right? Or you, tar you target the people that are going after a product. So I, I don't go after people who are into the outdoors. I go after people who are into fishing poles or people who are into uh, camp stoves or things like that, right? That's where I, I, I start. That's where I start is I, I find, uh, or I, I, find my, I, I define my audience, I find my target audience, by a product and not by a niche, right? You could call baby socks a niche, you can. I mean, if you really wanted to stretch, you could say, oh yeah, I'm in the baby sock niche, right? You can, but that's but it's a product and that's what I wanna, I wanna um, point out. And then when I, when I type in that keyword within Facebook, Facebook gives me several different options um, here. Uh, not enough though to really make anything useful, but what I like to do is I put in my keyword and I look at what Facebook shows me. Facebook gives me different, different type or different, um, what I call interest types of products. That's my phrase, you're not gonna find this anywhere else. Uh, I call them interest types. These are types of interests. So there's baby products, you got baby care, you got baby toys, ba baby boomers, 
baby food and products. So, so some of these are relevant and some of these are totally irrelevant. So baby boomers, that's, that has nothing to do with what we're talking about. But some of these others, these, these give me categories to go after. So uh, let, me, let me make it a little bit more clear what I'm talking about. So let's just go back and say the ba that baby, uh, baby is what I'm going after, baby clothes, right? Yeah, baby clothes because I'm selling socks. And I, so I put in baby clothes because baby socks didn't give me a whole lot of options. So I put in baby clothes, right? And then see what that gives me. Well, it gives me a whole list of options. And, and again, so I'm going to be looking for interest types, categories of interest that are uh, that, that show up over and over and over again. So I'll explain to you what, I'm, what I mean here. Um, right here, so when I type in baby clothes, we get the general terms, baby clothes, baby clothes. But then we also get infant clothes. Right, which is a, uh, if, if I was gonna put this into an interest type or a category of interest, I would call this uh, baby clothing by age. I got infant, and then I got maybe a little bit bigger, right? Look, like uh, QQ baby kitty clothes. I don't know, maybe that's a little bit older, I don't know. But it's, um, you know, it's, it's by a uh, category, right? So infant clothing, let's see if I find any more that are, that are for, uh, that have an age. And there's not. I don't see any more, any more interest in here that are by age, right? So what I do is when I come when I come here, I'm trying to categorize these interests. I'm trying to find categories of interests that come up over and over and over again. And this one, I thought uh, infant clothing, it had to do with, um, you know, it's kind of an age, but it's all babies. So infant isn't isn't really gonna give us anything different. You're not gonna find a bunch of different ages within baby. So maybe uh, the interest type of ages wouldn't work so well here, right? Now, I'm just kind of thinking out loud. This is what I would be doing. This is what I would be doing and thinking and saying to myself as I'm developing this. This is I'm not just saying this because I'm trying to explain it to you. I'm, I'm just I'm saying it because this is exactly what I would be thinking in my head. Exactly how I think of it in my head. I'd be what I just did there. I started with socks and then I reverted to clothes. Right. I'm looking for interest types and I said, okay, well, there's one with infant clothing. Maybe I can find one. Maybe there's another one newborn clothing and another one toddler clothing, which can kind of still be kind of a baby, maybe. Right. You know, those are uh, different. So, so there's different ages, and I could have categorized my interests by age, but because there's only one of them, I can't really do that. Okay, so let me look for other categories. Well, there's branded baby clothes, more than baby clothes, uh, QQ baby, whatever, Aussie baby, or Aussie baby, however you say that, I don't know how to say it. Buy, sell, and trade baby clothes. Um, love, keep, create the baby clothes keepsake company. Okay, so what I notice is that there are brands of baby clothes, right? There's the love, keep, create the baby clothes keepsake company. There's um, Aussie baby, if that's how you say it, and kids clothes and bedding accessories. I, I'm, I'm assuming that that's some sort of brand. Uh, and you could look these up. What I would do is I would actually look that up on Facebook. Um, just search in the Facebook search bar. Uh, this one seems like to be a brand, right? And so, so I have an interest type of brands. What I would be doing is I would actually be opening up a spreadsheet, a power or a, um, an Excel spreadsheet, and I would be making a making columns, and I would make the top the name of the top columns whatever the interest type is that I'm finding. This isn't a this isn't a targeting lesson, guys. There's I go way in depth on this stuff, and I'm trying to give you an overview of it just really quickly, and I, I hope that you get it. Um, but, but again, I start off with my, my spreadsheet and at the top I'll have my interest type. So in this example, I would, uh, I would have something that says uh, branded, branded baby clothes would be a column. And then I would take the interest type of branded baby clothes. I would take QQ baby clothes. I would take the Aussie baby. I would take the love, keep, create one. And I would go down and find other brands, right? Maybe like baby bones. I think that's probably a brand, right? And I'd find all of the brands, Green Baby Clothing, SoCal Baby Clothing, So so Crafty. Right? I'd grab all of those brands and I would put them in my PowerPoint under that one column of, of uh, brands, interest types, right? And then I'm looking for other interest type. So like diaper. Diaper is a, is a, uh, it's a, pro it's a type of, of product, right? So it's a type of product associated with baby clothes. So I could take, uh, so I could look down and see, well, maybe there's other types of product. There's there's diaper, then there's baby products, but that's kind of general and that's a behavior, which is different than an interest. And so I'm gonna keep those separate. I'm looking at interest types. So we got diaper, um, you know, all of these are, are behaviors. Let's see, soft baby clothing. That's a type of product, 
right? That could, be, that could be categorized as maybe an attribute as well, because that's sometimes how I, I categorize my, my interest type is, is by attribute. And so I could say soft baby clothing as an attribute, and then we'll have like um, heat or, or summer baby clothing, which is another at attribute. So you could categorize it any way you want. And so as you're scrolling down, you're looking for categories of interest types. And I build my, my, uh, my spreadsheet of columns of, of interest types and all of the interests that go into them. And then what I do is I come back and I build a separate audience for each one of those columns. So then I'll have my, you know, my um, my baby uh, attribute or clothing attributes audience, and I put all of those ones in there, all, all those targeting options in here. I'll take my baby, um, you know, the age range ones if if we had that, and I'd put all of those targeting options in there, and I'd make a separate app ad set for each one of those. And what that allows me to do is find out where my buyers are at. Right, and, and which type of, you know, every, every audience, every audience that you make here is going to have a different type of buyer based on the type of interest. So, pe so if you have an interest type, an audience built of the interest type of, of people who go to baby websites, that interest type, the people within that audience are gonna be different than the people who are in the uh, interest type of, say like baby strollers or baby items, right? So you make an interest type of baby items and it has like strollers and car seats and high chairs and, and uh, bibs and rattles and all this other stuff, right? You can make, that's a, a baby items, baby products. You can make an interest type of that and that's one ad set. And then you can make another ad set of people who, who visit all of these baby websites and that's one ad set. And the people who visit all the websites are gonna be completely different than the people who are interested in the products, okay? So that's the important thing to remember is that you want to break it up by interest type, look for, for these types of interests um, and categorize them and then break up your audience. With that said, with all of that said, that's how I find out who my audience is. However, with all of that said, what I do to test a product, if I just want to test a product and te just find the audience, I'll lump all of them together. I'll just start typing stuff in and I'll just start and clicking on everything, right? I'm just clicking on everything because what's going to happen is, is Facebook is going to find the buyers. Facebook's gonna find the buyers. And, and right now, I don't know if anybody's gonna buy anything from me. I, I don't know if anybody's gonna buy, uh, if they're gonna be interested in my products. I don't know, you know, if I broke it down by interest type, I don't know if any of the interest types are gonna be interested at all. I don't know if they're, they're gonna, anybody's gonna click. I don't know if anybody's buying. I don't know anything. I'm just testing it out there. It's just, you know, I'm just throwing something out, out there, kind of like um, the old saying, throwing shit at the wall and hoping it sticks. That's basically what it is. We're just creating these audiences. You're doing it, um, you know, in a logical way, but you're, you're, you're doing it and you don't know if it's gonna work. So I don't wanna waste a lot of time by breaking it up by interest type and creating all of these audiences and duplicating ads and, and all of this stuff. I don't wanna do that in the very beginning. I just wanna lump all of my audiences together and let Facebook optimize and let Facebook decide if that lump audience, if there's buyers in there. If there's buyers in there and if it's only in one small segment, maybe one interest type is where all your buyers are at, but you've lumped all of, your, all of these interests together, Facebook's gonna find them. And when you start getting purchases and Facebook optimizes and you start getting purchases, then you know, hey, there's something there. I need to break it up by interest type. So that's when you do what I just showed you a minute ago by breaking it up by interest type. And when you break it up by interest type, then you can find out where your buyers are at. Which one of the, which one of the smaller pictures or, or uh, uh, clusters of audiences are they hiding in? Right? Does that make sense to you guys? I hope that made sense to you guys. I hope I didn't lose you guys. Um, if I did lose some of you, because I, I, I expect that that would happen, uh, talking about this level of stuff on this, on creating these audiences, forget about, like, don't, don't really worry about any of that because we're looking at creating saved audiences. So just the, 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 the important thing is, is that you come here, you create a saved audience, you create your audience the main way you know how, the way you've already been doing it. Come in here and do it. And then... Click, create, let's, I think we gotta name this thing. Then click, uh, actually let's do, um, I wanna show you where to find that audience. So now you got your saved audience. I got 7,000 7, people in the audience and I now want to target them. So what I would do is I'm gonna come over here and go to my power editor they're making changes to Power Editor this weekend. Constantly making changes. They like making us look like asses. Those of us that like to teach this stuff make us look like we don't know what we're talking about because they change things right before your eyes. But um, we're making upgrades to Power Editor this weekend to make sure your 
your work isn't lost, you should publish all your changes before then. If you don't want to publish your changes before then, you can use bulk export to keep a copy of your changes. Okay, so if you guys got ads going on and you're just leaving them in your power editor, make sure you upload them, okay? Or save them. So now what you would do is now we're gonna, like say we wanted to create a new campaign, new ad set or whatever, you'd come to the ad set level where, you, where you're working on it at and where you would pick the audience that you just made, you would come down here to this audience section and you would just click the drop down that was right here. I guess I already have one picked, uh, but you pick the one that says, let me show you this, right? And it loads in the audience that we just made. And then I just go in and change all this other stuff. And well, actually I shouldn't have to because it should have been duplicated or whatever, depending on how you're doing it. But then the ad's good to go. I don't have to do anything. I don't have to sit there and type in the 25 interests, all of these all over again and try to, try to remember all, them all. They're already there, they're saved, right? Now, if you guys have been manually typing in all of these audiences over and over and over again, I hope you liked that. I hope you liked how easy that was. Just pick it and it loads it. It loads in the audience, that, that simple. It, it brings in all of the, uh, the interests or, or whatever it was, the, the um, demographics and behaviors that you choose. So, um, you know, it's that simple. It's not that hard. It's re really, really easy stuff. It's stuff that, um, you know, just is going to make your life a lot easier. It really, will, it really will make your life easier if you plan on doing this stuff long term. Okay. And when I mean long term, I mean past like six weeks, you know, long term. Nowadays, long term is short. Okay. But, uh, you know, maybe not six weeks, but, but, but if you really trying to plan on building a business out of this rather than just trying to see if this stuff works, right? If you're going to make it past the 90 days, uh, the 90 day challenge and, and keep building your brand, your store, then you do want to know this stuff. You do want to come in here and, and learn as much of this as you possibly can. Okay. Does it all make sense to you guys? We went over um, three different types of audiences. You come over here in your in your business manager, you click on the audience tab and there you can find your different audiences. If you have a bunch of them, you could then look at them by um, you know the different attributes there or you could filter them by different attributes here. Um, so maybe I only wanted to see my lookalike audiences, well that allows me to see only my lookalike audiences. Or maybe I wanna see my custom audiences, well that allows me to see only my custom audiences, right? Only wanna see my saved audiences, that allows me to do that. So you could filter, um, use these filters. I use filters and, and um, you know, I'm constantly using the filters and the searches within Facebook. So I recommend that you use them too. Okay. Yep, this does not only apply to Shopify. This is, this could be used anywhere. This is not just Shopify stuff, true that. All right, guys, uh, you guys take care. I'm gonna go ahead and end this webinar and talk to you guys next time.